HQ presented by Geico. Five days to Selection Sunday as we look at Jerry Palm's last four in and first four out of the field of 68. A week from tonight, might be seeing some of these teams in action as the play-in rounds begin in Dayton. Let's dive into the Bubble Boys with Jerry Palm, who joins us from Stanford, Connecticut. He's going to be in studio for HQ all throughout the week. Let's start with a team that currently is in your field, New Mexico, but they've lost three of four. That includes a home game against lowly Air Force, who they face in tomorrow's first round of the Mountain West Tournament, Jerry. Yeah, that's, you know, they can't afford to lose to them again. The problem for New Mexico is they haven't been great off their home floor. Plus, now they've got that quad four loss to Air Force at home. They also lost to UNLV at home. So, you know, they've got to make up for that and start showing that they can win off their home floor. You beat Air Force, then you get Boise State. Uh, if they can beat Boise State, they're going to feel a lot more comfortable about their chances. New Mexico, one of six Mountain West teams in Jerry's field of 68. But New Mexico has not won back-to-back -back games since January. And there you see the Mountain West tournament bracket from Las Vegas, site of so many conference championships this week let's move to the pac 12 another team that is currently in jerry palms field a team that unlike new mexico is hot this tournament also in las vegas at t-mobile arena we're going to focus in on the three seed colorado awaiting the winner of arizona state and utah in the quarterfinals the buffs have won six straight jerry they have a great net ranking of 27 but as you mentioned before net ranking doesn't matter when you're on the bubble that may, well net ranking doesn't save you if you're on the bubble that's for sure uh, for Colorado they, they have two quad one wins at Washington at Oregon neither of them are NCAA tournament teams or even potential NCAA tournament teams so they need to get a win over somebody that's going to be more comfortably in the field or at least someone they're competing with they could get Utah in another bubble team in that first game uh, if they don't get utah then obviously utah is a trouble but uh they also aren't getting help they need to play the best teams they can and right now that team is utah in in what could be a bubble elimination game uh in the early rounds of that pac-12 tournament if they win or either one of them wins then they get washington state and that's a team further up the bracket and there you could really make some a case for yourself for the NCAA tournament. Jerry, the last two teams that you currently have in the field are playing each other in the Big East tournament. Seton Hall and St. John's. The loser, I would imagine, is in a really difficult spot. Would you say the loser of this game will be done? Well, the loser of this game is done playing. However, depending on what other results happen, they could still find themselves in the NCAA tournament. Uh, but obviously, you know, you want to position, be in a position where you, you get a leg up, at least on that other team. You know, the winner of this game will get a leg up on the loser. Uh, but then your next game is Connecticut. Well, you know, if you beat Connecticut, now you feel really good. Uh, but if you don't, I mean, both of these teams could still get left out. Uh, if one of them doesn't find a way to beat UConn. St. John's and Seton Hall in the 4-5 game in the Big East tournament. Yeah, you got to think you win that game and UConn, you're in. You win that game and you're still feeling good even if you don't beat UConn. Let's go to the teams on the wrong side of the bubble right now for Jerry. Let's start with Pittsburgh. 11-3 in their last 14 games, but as you've pointed out year in and year out, the committee no longer values how you are playing going into the tournament. They're likely going to get Wake Forest in the ACC tournament. How big is that one for them? Yeah, that's another double bubble game, if you will, in a conference tournament. Pitt and Wake Forest both really on the fringes of trying to get in. Wake Forest's problem has been they haven't been able to beat quality teams off their home floor. Pitt's problem is more inconsistency than anything else. So, again, you know, a win for Wake Forest is like, okay, we finally beat someone at least we're competing with off our home floor. Uh, for a win for Pitt means a shot at North Carolina. It's really obviously the winner. Wake Forest would get that as well. Uh, you know, and if you beat North Carolina, you feel really good about getting in. Uh, for Pitt, another win over Wake might, or a win over Wake might be enough of a quality win to give them hope to get in, even if they don't beat North Carolina. 
uh, and Wake beating Pitt fixes a hole in their resume and might be enough to get in without beating North Carolina. Pitt, a team that had a, a weak non-conference schedule. That's why despite 21 overall wins and being in the ACC, they're on the wrong side of the bubble. As are the Utah Utes, who started off looking very much like a tournament team, maybe a, a, a good seeded tournament team. But Jerry, they, they're 9-11 and in the Pac-12. How does a team at 9-11 and in a bad conference still have a chance? Well, it's because of what they did outside the league. <laughs> it's, uh, because otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about them at all. Uh, and they really finished poorly uh, this, at the end of the year. They lost three out of five. Uh, lost at the Oregon State and Oregon. The Oregon State loss is a, is a killer, uh, which is why this is a team that probably needs to make a deep run. They got to go through Colorado um, in, the, in the quarterfinal and uh, a team that they're competing with. And then, you know, take your chances with Washington State. Uh, maybe that by the time Utah gets enough wins, they've won the championship, uh, but maybe not. You know, if they get by Washington State, they get by Colorado and, and you know, have a, take a shot at Arizona, maybe that's enough. But that's the thing about all of these teams that we're talking about. The only sure thing is the sure thing. <laughs> and you might think you've done enough, and then someone comes along and steals your bid. So there really only is one sure thing. Yeah, that's the other thing about this time of year. The bid stealers out there, that also is, is, is something that you just cannot uh, take into account uh, for going into the conference tournaments. Let's go to the SEC, Texas A&M. Jerry, they looked dead in the water uh, a week or two ago. Five-game losing skid, but they won their last three regular season games. They get Ole Miss in the SEC tournament. What do they have to do? Yeah, they've, they've got to they've gotta make something of a run. Uh, they have to be probably one of the better teams in this league if they're going to get to uh, an NCAA tournament. Uh, it's not easy for them because, you know, it's a it's a tough run and a tough league. But, you know, that's, that's pretty much what A&M is going to have to do. They're going to have to find a way um, to get by that Ole Miss and maybe Kentucky and then, you know, take a shot at Alabama. Uh, and see what happens. But, you know, beating Kentucky is a tall task because that's one of the hottest teams in the country right now. So not an easy path for Texas A&M, but it's the kind of games you need if you want to play your way off the bubble. And a team that's been pretty good in quad one games for a team on the bubble. That's one of the better quad one records you'll see with teams that are currently on Jerry Palm's bubble at five and six. From the SEC to the Big Ten and a, a, another game between two bubble teams. Ten seeded Ohio State, seventh seeded Iowa. How how much more does Ohio State have to do in this tournament than Iowa on the bubble? Actually, I think of them as being pretty similar. Um, obviously, I don't think the loser has much of a chance in this game. The winner uh, gets to play Illinois, which just beat Iowa at Iowa. Uh, so you know that's a recent matchup in Illinois. I mean, you know, next to Purdue is this it's a, it's a clear second best team in this league and there isn't a challenger to them for that. So, you know, it's a good draw for Iowa and Ohio State, a chance to play someone you're competing with and a chance to play someone that could really help you if you can beat them, maybe get into the NCAA tournament. For Iowa, a team that, that has gotten hot like Ohio State at the end of the season, they, they had that uh, almost, it felt like a win and in scenario against Illinois and they laid an egg. If Iowa beats Ohio State and then beats Illinois, what would you say their chances would be of getting in? Pretty good. Uh, and it's actually the same is true of Ohio State. I mean, they're mm -hmm. not equal, but they're equal enough that if Ohio State does the same thing, they're going to feel pretty good about their chances as well. All right, so two wins away, both those teams from the tournament more than likely, according to Jerry Palm. Let's go to the Big 12 in Kansas State. They just picked up a big win over a top 10 Iowa State team. And in the Big 12 tournament, maybe unlike any other tournament, you're just going to have opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. But how many games will Kansas State have to win with that net ranking of 70? Yeah, it's, it's tough. Uh, you know, and the net ranking is... You know, it's really heavily influenced by margin of victory. And this is a team with seven overtime wins. And the thing about overtime wins is you don't put up big numbers when you win in overtime. So, uh, you know, they've, they've done reasonably well, but they, they haven't quite been up to their schedule. All 13 of their losses are quad one and two, so they don't have a bad loss. But they're 13 and 13 against the top three quadrants, which is dicey. So they're definitely going to have to win a game or two in this tournament. 
it to have really much of a chance at all. It starts with Texas. It goes to Iowa State. I mean, like you said, this tournament, the path to success in this tournament means beating good teams almost every time you take the floor. And for Kansas State, that opportunity is directly ahead of them. They may be able to make the NCAA tournament without winning the Big 12 because of the quality of the teams in the path to a championship for them. That's Jerry Palm with us here on HQ. He'll be in studio all week up in Stamford, Connecticut, ahead of Selection Sunday, which well, our coverage begins at 6 o'clock Eastern time over on CBS and streaming live on Paramount Plus for the Selection Show.